In this exponent video, we're going to be starting with the first property. So looking at property number one. Property number one says a to the nth power times a to the nth power. We can simplify that as a to the m plus n power. So when we have the same bases that are multiplied, we actually add the powers. Now let me prove to you how this actually works. So I have an example here, 5 squared times 5 to the fourth. And by my proof, I'm going to write this out in long form. Now, I definitely don't expect you to do this on your homework because that's why we're introducing these properties to show you the short way to do it. But I need to prove to you why these properties work in the first place so you can trust me when you're going to use them. So 5 squared is 5 times 5. And 5 to the 4th is 5 times itself 4 times. Now we learned that multiplication is commutative and associative. So that means it doesn't matter what order I multiply all of these 5's together. So that means I can really just multiply all of these 5's together at the exact same time. Well, if I look at that, that is the definition of 5 to the 6th power, or 5 to the 2 plus 4, which gives me 5 to the 6th. Now, if this was an exact homework problem, 5 to the 6th would not be the correct answer. You would actually need to figure out what is 5 to the 6th. But for the purposes of the proof, I'm just trying to show you that this property works the way I'm telling you it should. So let's see how we would actually work this out in a homework problem. And I have example over here, example number one. So I have b to the seventh times b to the negative third times b to the fifth. Well, I have all the same bases that are multiplied. So that means this property applies, and I can just add these numbers in the same exponent on the same base. So all I need to do here is the simple math. What is 7 plus a negative 3 plus 5? Or the way I think about this is 7 minus 3, 4. 4 plus 5 is 9. So my correct answer to this is b to the ninth. And that is my final answer. And so I have covered all the way through property number 1. What it looks like, proving to you that it should work out the way I'm explaining it to you, and how we might see that on the homework problem. All right, so let's move on to property number two. Now, property number two follows very closely from property number one. Here, I have the same basis, but instead of multiplying, they are being divided. So if I reference property number one, if I'm going to multiply them and that changes it into addition, we can assume that division changes it into subtraction. So I here subtract my exponents. I take my top one minus my small one. Now again, you can just trust me that this property works, or you can see me actually prove it to you. So moving down here to my proof. Writing this out in long form, which again, I don't expect you to do on the homework, because that's why I'm introducing the properties in the first place. I'm just trying to explain to you why these work the way that it works. So 5 to the 6th power is 5 times itself 6 times, and 5 to the 4th power is 5 times itself 4 times. Now if I go back to just basic fractions, I know anything divided by itself gives me 1. So I can cancel 5 divided by 5, and that gives me 1. And I can do that up to as many times as I see 5 in both places. So let me cancel out another set of 5s, and another set of 5s, and another set of 5s. And notice it doesn't matter which ones I cancel out. But look at what I'm left with. I'm left with two of these 5s, or I'm left with 5 squared. So again, if I followed my property, it would say 5 to the 6 minus 4, which of course gives me 5 squared. So I've proved my property. But one more time, I want to emphasize, if this is a homework problem, don't leave it as 5 squared. You would simplify it as 25. So let's see how this actually works in a homework problem over here. 
48x to the 12th divided by negative 16x to the 4th. And I suggest that you pause the video to see if you can figure this out on your own. So the first thing that I'm going to start with here is my exponents, because that's what our emphasis is on this video. x to the 12th over x to the 4th. Well, I can follow my property and simplify it as x to the 12 minus 4, which gives me x to the 8. But I also need to figure out how does this 48 divided by negative 16 work? Well, that's a basic division problem. What is 48 divided by negative 16? And that comes out to be negative 3 because 16 goes in evenly to 48 three times. So my correct answer here is negative 3x to the 8th. Now let's move on to exponent property 3. Now this one goes back to one of those examples that I left open in the introduction video. So now we get to officially see how it actually works. What does something to the zero power actually mean? And the correct definition is 1. Anything to the zero power always simplifies to be 1. So let me prove it to you. In my proof down here, I have 2 cubed over 2 cubed. To help me simplify this, I'm referencing property number 2, which I've already proved to you, so it is okay for me to use it at this time. It says I can subtract these exponents. So that gives me 2 to the 3 minus 3, which gives me 2 to the 0 power. So I'm proving to you that this does simplify to a zero power. But now I need to show you that it's equivalent to 1. And the way to do that is basic definition. If I take any number and divide it by the exact same number, then those cancel out, and that leaves me with 1 divided by 1, or just 1 in itself. Now this always works out in any situation so therefore, I have just proved that anything to the zero power simplifies to be 1. So now we know the correct answer to example 1 here. 8 to the zero power is just 1. So how does this fit in with actual homework problems? And I have that in example 2 here. So hopefully you're starting to see at this point that our homework problems are not only going to involve the property that we just learned, but they're going to involve every property that we've seen up until this point. So that's why I have included all the properties that we've learned up to this point, in case you need to reference those. So in example two, I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can put all of these properties together to get the right answer. Okay, the first thing that I'm going to start with is y to the zero power. That's probably going to be the first thing that you pick out because that was the last thing that we talked about. So of course, anything to the zero power is one. That's the easy part. Well, what happens in the rest of this problem then? Now, I'm going to take a couple of steps to simplify this problem. If you can do this all at once, no big deal. So in the top, I have x cubed times x to the fourth. Well, that uses property number one up here, which says I add my exponent. So that gives me x to the seventh. I'm going to multiply this times one because that's what y to the zero was. And everything in the denominator, I'm just going to copy down because I did not simplify that at all. All right, the second step in this problem here, I can simplify this x to the seventh over x squared. That uses property number two. I subtract those exponents. So x to the seventh divided by x squared gives me x to the fifth. Now, I really need to multiply that by one here, but that goes back to the identity property. Anything times one is itself, so I don't need to put times one up in the top. And in the bottom, I still have y to the fifth, so I just copy that over. At this time, I know that I'm finished because I don't have any more like bases. I have a base of x and a base of y, and I cannot combine those in any sort of way, even though my exponents may match here. So I have my final answer to this problem. 
At this time, I'm going to stop this video. In the next video, I'm going to continue on with my next properties.